A review of Blue Planet Red, a Mars documentary by Brian Corey Dobbs and Michael J. Craig. Mars used to be a blue planet like Earth. What happened to it? Blue Planet Red is a groundbreaking documentary that examines the history, evidence for life and global catastrophes that contributed to the death of the planet. The documentary is available to stream on various platforms, however I was lucky enough to get a copy of it on Blu-ray. My friend, an executive producer of my YouTube channel, sent over a copy from the US to South Africa and asked me to kindly do a review. The start screen greets you with a spectacular ocean scene. The menu options are neatly displayed and include the usual options found on most Blu-rays and a behind the scenes option which includes 35 minutes of additional footage. A must watch folks. In typical Dob style the introduction featuring Cypher Fox and Music by Swarm fills your screen with a vast sweeping desert landscape. Swarm's music featured throughout the documentary ranges from cinematic, synthwave to punchy, dramatic and mysterious. Cypher Fox performs a role with style and high drama in the cut transitions. The list of researchers and specialists interviewed in this documentary is exhaustive. Dobbs made sure he includes most of the top people in the field. These include Dr. John Brandenburg, Professor Avi Loeb, Richard B. Hoover, DSC, Robert Soch, PhD, and George J. Haas of the Sedonia Institute, my friend and fellow collaborator in the field, to name a few. George has written several papers about some of my discoveries on Mars. Many new researchers are introduced for the first time. I like how Brian introduces each interviewee by providing a brief biography and a short look into their private lives. By the way, just a footnote, Dr. Brandenburg presents an interesting proof of gravity manipulation he discovered using electricity. Watch the documentary to find out more. There are a total of 18 chapters. These delve into many compelling, serious topics. But here and there, Brian dropped in some really humorous segments. The topics under discussion are diverse and too long to talk about in detail in this review. I'll present an executive overview of sorts. The documentary starts with the discovery of Martian meteorites with traces of fossilized microbial life found on Earth, to panspermia, the theory proposing life spread through the solar system by means of meteors carrying life forms. Could life have spread from Mars to Earth or vice versa? Evidence that NASA may have photographed fossilized microbes or life forms is presented. These include a crinoid, which is also found here on Earth. What's troubling is that NASA photographed the potential crinoid, and instead of performing further tests and taking a range of photographs and the different lighting conditions, they proceeded to destroy, in inverted commas, the potential fossil with the scuffing tool. Was this intentional or a mistake? Data from the NASA Viking missions to Mars back in the 70s present evidence that the life detection experiment 
successfully detected the presence of life forms on Mars. The designer of the experiment indicates that the experiment did exactly what it was meant to do. It conclusively detected life on Mars. NASA, however, discourages this finding, indicating that it was inconclusive. Evidence that Mars once had oceans and lakes is presented, comparing fossilized life forms found in oceans here on Earth to similar fossils found on Mars. Various theories about how Mars lost its water and most of its atmosphere are discussed. Some propose meteorite strikes, others from the Thunderbolts project propose the planet was struck by plasma discharges, perhaps in Mars's early history when the planets were sometimes close to one another in a chaotic early solar system. Evidence of this is seen in the huge core, Valles Marineris, similar to the Grand Canyon here on Earth. There is also further evidence on the Martian surface, the presence of hexagonal shaped depressions. Dr. John Brandenburg also presents evidence of two massive planet destroying weapons grade nuclear explosions. Mars experienced multiple catastrophes in its distant past. Liquid water may still be present on Mars. Some NASA photographs show potential liquid water seeping up to the Martian surface and then flying down slopes, leaving dark, mud-like trails. These catastrophes not only caused Mars to lose its water and most of its atmosphere, but destroyed everything on the Martian surface, including, for which evidence is presented, of megalithic structures on Mars. Photographs of a number of ancient, highly eroded pyramidal structures and other megalithic structures is also shown. One of these, the huge flat top pyramid with a ramp on the one side, are discovered in Cerberus Palace. The pyramid is similar to the Pyramid of the Moon, found in Teotihuacan here on Earth. Putting humans on Mars is also cautioned. Pathogens may be present on Mars, which may potentially be deadly to humans. There is also the possibility of contamination of Mars by our rovers and landers, and the reverse with Mars sample return missions to Earth. Without spoiling the documentary for those that haven't seen it, the most dramatic and soul-shaking moment in the documentary is the segment dealing with the obliteration of Mars's surface and the resulting loss of most of its atmosphere due to huge weapons-grade nuclear explosions, many times the destructive power than that of the meteorite that destroyed the dinosaurs here on Earth. The theatrics and music are heavy and dramatic, and Cypher Fox portrays this catastrophic event with passion. Brian captures the emotion of this moment perfectly. The evidence presents the probability that our solar system was visited and inhabited by an earlier race of technologically advanced beings and that life forms once thrived on Mars. Why does NASA and other space agencies avoid talking about this possibility? Could it be because of the findings of the Brookings Institute report back in the 50s and 60s, or may it be because they are avoiding losing funding to fund all their missions? There is much, much more to discuss. However, this being a review, I will not cover everything. I encourage you to watch this highly compelling documentary for the bigger, complete story. Overall, the cinematography, sound and production quality is top class. Definitely up there with some of the large budget productions. In my opinion, Blue Planet Red 
is the best Mars documentary I've ever seen. Well done, Brian and Michael. I highly recommend Blue Planet Red. Watch it when you have a chance. You'll be glad you did.